Discover the enchanting mysteries of Jerusalem, a city that unveils the sacred in surprising and beautiful ways. As night falls, a mesmerizing show of mystical lights takes over the sky, creating an almost magical atmosphere. These breathtaking scenes make onlookers wonder if they're witnessing a miracle or some inexplicable phenomenon. What could these enigmatic glows signify? Such manifestations can be seen as harbingers of significant changes or perhaps as a reminder of the constant divine presence in this ancient land. Yet the mysteries of Jerusalem go even further. As the city falls into silence, mysterious sounds waft through the air, inspiring awe and reverence. Are they angelic chants echoing over the rooftops, or mysterious messages from the heavens? The hearts of observers race as they try to decipher these enigmatic sounds, which seem to defy common understanding. Suddenly, like an echo of ancient biblical tragedies, a thick swarm of locusts invades Jerusalem's fields and buildings. Are we witnessing the emergence of a new biblical plague, a divine punishment for the deviations of modern times? We're living in times where materialism seems to be calling the shots. But the mysteries and phenomena of Jerusalem beckon us to revisit the mystical and rethink what we understand as reality, nudging us to recognize the divine that permeates our daily lives. The city of Jerusalem, with its enigmatic shadows, promises revelations for those willing to look beyond the obvious. As a vibrant center of faith and miracles, Jerusalem stands out as a spiritual oasis in a world plagued by uncertainty. The ancient walls of the city whisper secrets from both distant and recent times, forging a vivid connection between the heavenly and the earthly, in constant interaction with the sacred. As we unravel the mysteries Jerusalem hides, we're transported to the visions of Isaiah, speaking of reconstruction and renewal. Ruins rising, millennia-old foundations restored, and broken paths rebuilt to make way for new lives. Beyond its immense historical and spiritual significance, Jerusalem is crucial in the Christian narrative, recounting the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The city is pivotal for Christians as it was the stage where Christ walked, taught, performed healings, and proclaimed the kingdom of God, solidifying it as a pillar of the Christian faith, reflecting both its earthly importance and its celestial dimension. The essence of Christ for humanity hits deep with his redemption gig. Dude straight up sacrificed himself, spilled his blood to scrub humans clean of their sins and hook them up with a direct line to God. That move? It's all about the empty tomb vibe. It ain't just about his comeback from the dead, but also about sparking hope again, showing he owned death and sin. And yo, Jerusalem? It's not just famous for those epic events, it's like a sneak peek of the celestial city where it's eternal chill time with God. Check this in the book of Revelation that Heavenly City gets a killer description. It's dropping down from the sky, all decked out like a bride meeting her boo. And God's like, yo, I'm making everything new. That's some next-level vision, not just promising full-on redemption, but keeping Christian hopes lit for a divine future. Getting deep into Christian theology, Paul flips the script on the temple scene. He's like, nah. It ain't just about bricks and mortar in Jerusalem anymore. Now it's about a spiritual zone, showing a major shift in how Christians see sacred spots. Paul shares some deep thoughts on Christian spirituality in his letters, especially in his first letter to the Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20, he drops a truth bomb, reminding believers that their bodies are God's temple housing the Holy Spirit and they don't belong to themselves anymore. They've been bought with a high price. So he's like, take care of God's property, your body and spirit, because they're divine now. This flips the script on the whole idea of a temple. It's not just a physical place to worship. It's a state of being for every believer. This fresh view suggests that divine connection isn't confined to a place or time. It's always on, no need for middlemen or specific rituals. This shakes things up for traditional sacred sites, especially in Palestine packed with Christian history from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. These spots, while important, might be seen more as historical landmarks than must-visit religious spots. V Jerusalem holds a special spot in Christian hearts. It's where Jesus did some major ministry, like the Last Supper, setting up the whole Eucharist deal. That wasn't just about a symbolic snack. It was about forging a spiritual bond between Christ and His crew, emphasizing the importance of communion and ongoing celebration through the ages. 
Even with Paul's new take on temple being an internal thing, these places still get mad respect as key Christian landmarks. Jerusalem ain't just some old history stage, it's like the heart of Christianity, where big deals like Jesus' passion and resurrection went down. At Golgotha, it wasn't just about Jesus getting nailed, but it was also Him offering up the ultimate redemption deal for humanity. His death and rise in that city, man, it's like ticking off ancient prophecies and sealing the deal on kicking sin and death's butt for good. Then, three days later, Jesus popping back to life made Jerusalem even more of a spiritual hotspot, showing life can kick death's butt any day and opening up a whole new chapter for humanity. And when Pentecost rolled around and the Holy Spirit hit up the apostles, it was like game on for spreading the Jesus story, just like Acts of the Apostles tells it. These events, they're like super glue for believers in Jerusalem. With the Holy Spirit backing them up, the apostles had the juice to spread the good word all over the place. Sacred spots like the Via Dolorosa and Gethsemane. They're like pilgrimage central for Christians worldwide, keeping that direct line to the divine going strong and reminding everyone just how key Jerusalem is in the Christian faith game. When Christians hit up the holy spots like Jerusalem, it's not just about reliving the big moments of their religion. It's about cranking up their faith and feeling that direct line to God. Those places written into the sacred texts, give the city this vibe of divine power that hits every visitor right in the fields. But even though Jerusalem's like the spiritual HQ for Christianity, believers gotta remember, your connection with God isn't tied solely to being in those holy hotspots. According to Christian teachings, prayer and getting in touch with the divine can happen anytime, anywhere. It's all about hammering home the idea that God's kicking it everywhere not just in designated holy zones. That drives home the point that God's presence is part of everyday life for believers wherever they roam. Plus, Jerusalem's been the stage for some out-of-this-world celestial events, grabbing global attention and adding an extra layer of intrigue to the already legendary city. Lately, there have been some wild celestial happenings, bright lights, glowing orbs putting on a show in the sky before vanishing into thin air turning up the mystery and awe surrounding Jerusalem. It's like the spiritual spotlights shining even brighter, drawing eyes from all around the globe. The mysterious happenings in Jerusalem, both visually and audibly, often get folks thinking they're in for some intense spiritual experiences, stirring up awe and religious fervor among onlookers. The city isn't just lit up with puzzling lights but it also echoes with intriguing sounds ranging from hums to melodies that sound like trumpets or heavenly choirs, all without a clear source. These phenomena defy regular explanations, sparking heated debates about where they come from and what they mean. These puzzling displays stir up a mix of emotions, from wonder to intense curiosity. For many, they're seen as divine messages, or even the fulfillment of biblical prophecies talking about the end times. The accounts found in sacred scriptures are key to understanding how the divine shows up in the human world, revealing how God communicates with the faithful through supernatural signs, angelic appearances, and other miraculous interventions. These stories are packed with teachings about faith, divine action, and God's purpose for humanity. One remarkable example of the influence of divine signs in the biblical narrative is the story of the Star of Bethlehem, described in the Gospel of Matthew. In this passage, an extraordinary star leads the wise men from the east to Bethlehem to find the newborn Jesus, thus fulfilling ancient prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. This event not only guided these travelers, but also served as a symbol of God's plan for salvation, showing how celestial signs can indicate God's will and foreshadow moments of great spiritual significance. Another significant passage found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke is the Transfiguration of Jesus. This episode depicts Jesus going up a mountain with Peter, James, and John, where he transforms before them, his face shining like the sun and his clothes becoming luminous. At this moment, Moses and Elijah appear and speak with Jesus, emphasizing his connection to Jewish traditions and the continuity of the mission he came to fulfill. This miracle not only emphasizes the divine nature of Jesus, but also reaffirms the truthfulness of the promises made by God, supernaturally revealing his ongoing plan of salvation for humanity. 
The transfiguration is a powerful manifestation of how God can reveal Himself and guide the faithful through mystical and impactful experiences, reinforcing the connection between the divine, sacred scriptures and people's faith. The Bible is like a treasure trove of stories showing how heavenly events convey divine truths, reflecting God's all-powerful presence. Take, for instance, the Old Testament tale of the cloud and fire guiding the Israelites on their journey out of Egypt. Then there's Ezekiel's wild vision of a fiery wheel up in the sky. Jumping to the New Testament, you've got angels dropping in on shepherds to announce Jesus' birth, and John getting some mind-blowing apocalyptic visions on Patmos Island. But these stories aren't just fancy words on a page. They hammer home the idea of an ongoing chat between heaven and earth. Through them, we get a glimpse of God's authority over the whole shebang, including what goes down in the skies and how He uses it all to lay out His salvation plan. Each story's like a nudge to keep an eye out for God's signs and to respond with trust and obedience. The Bible serves up a rich take on these divine interactions, nudging us to chew over how awesome and loving God is and pushing us to deepen our connection with Him. Thanks for joining us today to dive into these mind-blowing topics. Hope you found this chat about celestial events and their Bible tie-ins both intriguing and uplifting. If you're hungry for more on this stuff and beyond, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate your support and look forward to catching you in our next vids.